Uh, okay, uh, my esteemed visitor uh, is still here with me and we want to conclude on this issue of trying to demystify the components that have to do with uh, homosexuality as a puzzle for the African culture but also for the entire world. Um, I was asking you a question, perhaps in conclusion, what would be your response towards uh, a redress for people who have neither affiliation or interest in theology, to be precise in uh, design in terms of uh, intelligent design in terms of God or spirituality of sorts, whether Hindu. I know we make several quotations in this book in terms of the different aspects of uh, what the scriptures talk about, what they say in terms of uh, the issue of homosexuality. We, we all know about Sodom and Gomorrah and the likes. But then there are free thinkers and people like the, the likes of Stephen Hawking and people like uh, 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 Albert Einstein, uh, the, 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 like, the great thinkers of, of the world in terms of science, who maybe are, are better associated with metaphysics and things to do with the Big Bang than, than, than even uh, theology or, or, or traditional methods of approach. What would be your response in terms of a justification for this issue of homosexuality? Uh, well, when you look at the natural law, uh, considering the order and pattern of the metaphysics of everything, mm. uh, people have to coexist horizontally with each other, then mm. diagonally with nature, mm. and then vertically with the class, first uh, with the most high being. Mm. You may call him God or divine, mm. if you may like. Well, this work hand in hand to make sure that the world goes, uh, to make sure that the, the, the earth keeps on moving forward. Mm. If there is an imbalance, then there is going to be a problem. Mm. So uh, you, you talked about object failure, mm. whereby someone expresses their object sexuality towards mm. a certain object. Mm. Uh, you made allusion to the case of the Eiffel Tower, where Lady Mary the Eiffel Tower. Mm. Well, now, uh, when, 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 when you look at Thomas Nagel's arguments, I, he talks about passion, personal arousal. Mm. He brings out the argument of personal feelings or uh, the personal expressions between different people in that in coexisting mm. different people display their emotions. Mm. Well, now, if uh, that lady would, uh, she, of course, she does it out of love that she loves her, a full tower. Mm. Uh, can the a full tower which so great can mm. it also express the same feelings mm. she, uh, she expresses towards it mm. uh, definitely it would be no mm. so what would happen if she would maybe like to maybe uh, have like intercourse with it maybe if, if, if you're to consider the aspect of maybe progression yes. what would happen yes because uh, uh, fine, uh, th it might be urged that not all sexual conduct is procreative. Mm. Uh, well, there you can you can make reference to that. Different isolated cases, uh, as they may propound that, look, there are people who are stray mm. because of biology, they cannot give birth. Yes. Uh, maybe they have hit their menopause. Mm. So what would be your, maybe that question would be, what would be your response towards such a setting? Yes. That, uh, in as much as they're engaging in heterosexual activity, yes. they cannot still bear birth, uh, bear kids rather, they cannot mm. procreate. Mm. Uh, so my reply would be, uh, in as much as uh, the biology is against them, mm. we have seen high isolated cases where people have gone ahead to get zero gates, mm. uh, in that uh, you get uh, maybe an egg mm. from then the carrier mother mm. and then you maybe inseminate it and then the, and then a child is born yes so th th that indicates interest mm. of this particular couple mm. despite it being biologically not able to maybe procreate mm. uh, it shows that there is interest to procreate mm. uh, point to the fact that it is very important yes. for the order and pattern of yes. this world to continue.
you know that without procreation mm. there there would be an imbalance mm. uh when 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 you check out in the books mm. and research shows that uh in china uh, the, the population is on a free fall mm. in that uh the, it's not balancing up the people coming in into the world are mm. less compared to the people going out of the world mm. same thing with uh with japan mm. during the, the, the bombings which happened which took out people's lives yes a lot of people died compared to the people who were coming into the world mm. so to me uh, all these factors have to coexist and work hand in hand mm. one cannot work against the other absolutely. if that is to happen then it will collapse absolutely so this a kind of ecosystem where the world is dependent upon one another Exactly. I think that's probably the the greatest message to whoever we want to argue in terms of a logical point of view of uh, of uh, this ideology of uh, of homosexuality. So I think the point you make here is that whereas we are saying it's it's their right or it's anybody's right to do as they claim they want to do, maybe the better position would be not enforce it on other people, perhaps not even put monetary connotation to it. You know, because when you do that, you are especially to African countries, which, which almost the entire budgets are funded by foreign entities, you are actually indirectly forcing people to do acts that, that they don't really believe in in, in, in the very first place. Yes. And the moment you die and stop giving them the money, they will go back to the normal things. So that begs the question, perhaps, of even what's happening now. We had individuals in terms of religious leaders who have come out with sweeping statements and they're saying, if you don't want them, if you don't give us tithe and offerings, we'll take the money <laughs> that the gays are, are, are giving uh, to, 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 to us. You know, those are interesting arguments because then you, you clearly know where they are going. And Africans can be very good, by the way, when it comes to soliciting money. <laughs> they, they, they will do anything as long as they want to get the money from you. I'm told he, there are people who actually are paid to to do those acts and then they send the videos abroad and they're paid over that because I think they've seen that Africa is a hard place to, to break when it comes to some of those entities. So I think that's the debate. What else would you want to say from uh, your discovery out of this book that you think is relevant for our viewers and as a scholar, as a legal scholar and also as a future brain of this country? What else would you think is necessary that we may have left out? in terms of uh, a conclusion by way of uh, to our audience well uh, in conclusion uh, this discussion has been able to delve and briefly highlight what is in this book uh, though we have omitted to look at different uh, interpretations mm. when it comes to religion maybe the atheist interpretation mm. that people don't believe in God. Mm. But all arguments lead to one place uh, and maintain the, the strong point that religion is against homosexuality. Mm. Despite the, the uncoordinated positions from uh, various religious leaders, uh, uh, to be specific, uh, Pope Francis, mm. uh, uh, where he comes out to say that uh, these gay people have their rights, that they deserve a chance to practice marriage mm. the ones ever. however this uh, attracts hostility mm. towards it from the uh, from the religious dominations in east africa and then africa at large uh, to be specific mm. as bishop kazimba mm. comes out and maintains his stronghold against homosexuality mm. uh, in solidarity with other religious dominations mm. which hold the same similar position. Perhaps the, the begging question now would be, if you are the president of this country and the bill has been brought to you, you are sent to it, the next day it is thrown to the High Court or the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Court, and it is thrown out, yes. what remedies do you have as a country or as a president? You are the Attorney General. The president has come to you and said, listen, you are the Attorney General, you are the master of the law, what remedies do we have? This thing has been thrown out. Well, Can I proclaim a decree? Can I rule by decree? Can I just make a proclamation? What options do I have? Actually, from the legal point of view, I think we are far beyond decrees and proclamations. It happened so, in COVID time. The president well, made a proclamation that, you know what, by nine, all cars should not be moving. What happened? 
the next day, at that very night, cars were impounded. You remember? True. Yes. It happened, but now uh, these are. And no one challenged him in court by These are uh, sensitive <laughs> matters. Mm. Uh, there are matters to do with different people's human rights. So what I would rather propose is uh, uh, when when you look at our constitution, uh, Uganda is uh, it is not a, it's it's a secular state in terms of religion in mm. that we don't we, we don't have one specific religion. Right. True. Uh, so this means that uh, if there is a possibility that if we had at least a religion we are uh, subscribing to as a country in uh, in recognition of other religions let's say we can have christianity and then recognize islam or the vice versa alongside other religions mm. that we have a religious force in place in our constitution mm. to the effect that if a petition is before court mm. court has in mind what the religious uh, the, the the religious view is, mm. or what religion holds. Mm. Uh, for example, if 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 you look at uh, countries which have uh, which, which have one religion, let's say Qatar, Saudi Arabia, these issues are actually very limited. Mm. Uh, to to bring it home, mm. just on the continent, when you look at Nigeria, mm. it is a secular state. Mm. Uh, there is uh, it's, it's it's Islam is the state religion, mm. but Christianity is thriving, there are churches there. Mm. So if each time uh, a judge is interpreting a, <laughs> the law and he, has, and he makes reference or he alludes to the fact that this is the religious position, mm. then I think uh, it would actually further or better the fight against homosexuality. Well, that is a loose, uh, a loose string for the president to hang on. I don't know, if, Mr. President, if you're listening, I'm not sure whether this would be the next attorney general you want to appoint, <laughs> because he's arguing in terms of uh, narrowing down to religious affiliations. Uh, perhaps he, he subscribes to the natural school of law, you know, and now jurisprudence should be interpreted in terms of uh, natural school of law rather than other, then legal readers will say, wait a minute, how about us? Because we have to interpret law in terms of a changing society, not so. And I think Roscoe Pound also said law, law must be uh, it must be still, but it should also be constant in terms of its stillness. You know, so those are arguments that that are interesting for us to debate. We'll have a further and better particulars on another day. I'm very impressed by my man, my my young man here. We are we are mentoring at the Sweet Generis, as uh, you know. Emporium of sorts where he these are the new brains of tomorrow. So by name, sir, we want to be on record so that oh you don't want to say your name. You are fear he may fear say by the way, by mention of my name. <laughs> are you comfortable? If you're not comfortable, it's okay. Let's measure the status quo. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you for your for your good research and for the great work you'll be doing for the sweet generation. Okay.